الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يهده فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يفع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek his forgiveness and we worship him and we ask him to shield us against the evils of our souls and we ask him to cleanse us from the sins that result from our very own actions whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides no one shall be able to misguide and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray no one shall be able to guide I testify that there is no other deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners and I testify that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam is the final prophet and messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who have believed, fear Allah. Fear Allah as he is worthy of that fear. And do not let death catch you except in a state of submission to his will or as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you people, fear your Lord who created you from one soul. And from that soul he created it its mate and from both of them he produced so many men and women fear Allah through whom you interact with each other and respect the rights of the next of kin because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you is the ultimate observer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran O you who have believed fear, fear Allah and speak only righteousness speak only the truth so that he may reform your deeds and forgive your sins. Because whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has definitely achieved a great achievement. The most truthful of all words is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam as it helps us understand and live the Quran. And the worst matters in deen are bid'ah, or innovations of new practices that we didn't learn from Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam or his companions. All these innovations, they lead to misguidance, and misguidance leads to the fire of hell. Uh, there's a story that I recently learned, and I wanted to share it with you today. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to present in, the, in, in this story guidance for every single one of us. The story is about a Muslim scholar whose name is Abdullah Turjuman. He is a Muslim scholar, but he actually used to be Christian. He used to be a Christian priest. His name is Abdullah Turjuman, and his his old name, his, his the name that he was born with, is Anselm Fermeda. He was a priest in southern Spain and in a place called Mallorca. So when he converted to Islam, he changed his name to Abdullah Turjuman al Mayurki, the Mallorcan Abdullah. And he was a very, very, very knowledgeable priest of his time. He was very knowledgeable. Since the age of six, his parents put him in a monastery so he can serve, quote unquote, Jesus. Peace be upon him. He wasn't Muslim. He was not born. He was born Muslim, but he was raised Christian because of his family. He put him in a monastery and he lived his entire life in that monastery. 
until maybe when he was a, a young adult, a youthful boy, probably around 15 or 16, the biggest priest in Spain at the time was visiting that monastery. And the biggest priest in Spain, that was right before the Spanish Empire blew out to be one of the biggest empires in history. That was right before, it was probably around the, the middle of the 14th century, and in history time, the ninth century. The, the middle of the ninth century. It was right before the Spanish Empire became very, very big. So the priest, the head, the highest priest in Spain at that time was probably the most respected priest in Europe and all of the world at that time. And that priest, he was visiting the monastery where Abdullah Turjuman, before he converted to Islam, he was a boy serving in that monastery. And that high priest, he really admired that young boy. He admired him very much. He saw a lot of insight in him, a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. So he took him in service of him. And he and the boy left the monastery and started serving that priest at that time. He was his right hand man. He, he did everything for him. He prepared his lectures. He prepared his books, he prepared his notes. He was the last person the priest saw before he goes to sleep and the first person he sees when he wakes up. He was preparing everything for him and attending with him all the meetings and, and basically he was part, a very important part of his daily life. One day that priest, that high priest, he fell sick and he couldn't make it to the annual meeting of priests. You know, the priests, they have an annual meeting where they sit down and they discuss things and matters of, of da'wah and matters of knowledge and things like that. And that priest, he couldn't make it. So he said to the, to the boy who was at this time, he was a young adult, probably in his mid-twenties. He told him, you go to that meeting and you report everything to me afterwards. It was a very big meeting and supposedly all the big priests of the time in Europe were in that meeting. After that meeting was finished, he came back to his priest and he told him, he asked him what happened, how was the meeting and everything. He said, we, oh man, we really wish you were there today. We really missed you today because everybody disagreed and we wanted somebody to dissolve or to resolve the disagreement, to tell us what the truth was. He said, what, what did they disagree about? He said, they disagreed about the meaning of the word Paraclete. In 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 uh, Greek, this word is pronounced parakletos. Parakletos, the paraclete. In Arabic, al paraclete. He said they they disagreed about the meaning of this word. This word can be found in the Gospel of John, attributed to Jesus, peace be upon him, as he says, "When I leave, the paraclete will come." And the paraclete will tell you the same things that I was telling you, and he will guide you to the truth. So they disagreed about the meaning of the word paraclete. The major priests in Spain, right before it became one of the biggest empires in modern history, they were sitting there disagreeing about the meaning of the word that was reported that Jesus, peace be upon him, said, this person, the paraclete, will come after me and he will guide you to the truth. They didn't know who that is. So, the translation in the current Bible says something like advocate, or in Arabic it will say al-mu'azzi, the advocate, or the, the one who intercedes on behalf, or the one who elevates pain, or something like this. They didn't know who this word refers to. So the priest asked the boy, at the time he was a young adult, he asked him, so what did so and so say? He said, so-and-so said it's, it's Yahya, it's John, John the Baptist. He said, no, he's wrong. And how about so-and-so, what did he say? He said, well, so-and-so said it's the father of Yahya, Zechariah. He said, no, he's wrong also. He said, what about so-and-so, so what did he say? He said, well, the other one said it, it's the Holy Spirit or something like that. He said, no, he's, he's wrong, they're all wrong. He said, but what about the major priest, priest of so-and-so, what did he say? He said, well, that one didn't even know. He said he's still researching. He said, oh yeah, they're all wrong. If I were there today, I would have told them. These are the words of the priest, the highest, one of the highest priests of the time in Spain. He said, if I were there, I would have told them. So, 
Abdullah ibn Jumayn, he was still Christian, he asked him. He said, uh, well, do you know who that is? He said, of course I know. He said, well, then tell me, who is this person? He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. It's not going to help you. He said, no, but tell me. I mean, what, what, I need to know, I, I, even if it doesn't help me. I'm curious, who is this paraclete? He said, no, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. When you reach the same level of knowledge that I have reached, you will find out on your own. So the man, the, the young boy, Abdullah, he cried and cried and told him, listen, I've been serving you for 10 years. You took me out of the monastery. I learned a lot from you. And now is the time that I'm asking you this knowledge. You don't want to tell me? <coughs> he said, it's not going to help you. As a matter of fact, if I tell you, it may hurt you. So he begged him. He said, you know, I, I beg you. I, I cannot continue like this. And he was really, really press, pressing him until he told him, yes, this paraclete is Muhammad. He said, he responded, he said, who? The, the Arabic prophet? The prophet of the Arabs? He said, yes, the Arabic prophet. He said, oh, so he's actually a prophet? He said, yes, he is. He said, how come we're not following him? <coughs> he said, well, I'm not following him because look at me. I'm the highest priest in Spain and probably in Europe. If I convert to Islam, look, how, look what I'm leaving behind. All these kings respect me. All, all these people respect me. I am now one of the head people in the whole world. I make policy for the rest of the world. I pick the kings of certain countries. I announce, I make decisions, big decisions. But when I become Muslim, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to start from scratch. They're going to put me in some masjid. I may even not find enough food to eat. The man told him, yeah, but this is the truth. What are we going to do? We're supposed to follow the truth. He said, yeah, but remember what Jesus said, dunya The love of this dunya is the head of every major sin. Every sin results from this. So he said, and I love this dunya. I love my position in this dunya. He said, so what about me? Now that I know, now that you told me this, <coughs> what do you advise me? He said, follow him if you wish. You can follow Muhammad if you wish. But don't do it in this country because you're, they're not going to live. You're, they're going to kill you. So Abdullah Turjuman traveled from Spain to Tunisia and he lived there the rest of his life. He changed his name from Anselm Turmeda to Abdullah Turjuman and they used to refer to him as Abdullah Turjuman al Mayurki. And he became very popular and he wrote a book, a very, very popular book called Tuhfat al Arib fi Rabd ala Ahl al Salih. The gift of the intelligent people in response to the people of the crucifix, or those who worship the crucifix. And he wrote that book. His name is Abdullah al-Turjuman al -Mayuki. This is a story, brothers and sisters, that happens to every place where people are gifted with knowledge from Christianity, from that side. People who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, when they get to a certain level of knowledge and they know the truth, that's what, don't be surprised. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. He said that the people of the book, they know Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam better than they know their own children. So during this time of the year, when somebody, when you hear a Muslim, billah, saying to somebody, Merry Christmas, that person does not know, this misguided Muslim does not know about the, the magnitude of that word that he says to somebody. That word, Merry Christmas, you're saying to somebody that's either ignorant of the truth, doesn't know what they're following, doesn't know the truth, or they know, but they're arrogant. So if they're ignorant, you're telling them thumbs up on your ignorance. And if they're arrogant, and they know the truth, but they don't want to follow it because they don't want to lose their positions in this life, if they're arrogant, they're tell you're telling them Enjoy your arrogance. Have a wonderful celebration of your arrogance. Enjoy the lie that you're attributing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have a joyful day of insulting the Lord Almighty. That's what you're saying. When you say Merry Christmas, you say this. Enjoy this day that you created the biggest lie. It's like this. If somebody's walking around telling you that we are descendants of giraffes, the first mother of a human being was a giraffe. And then they have this day where they celebrate 
the birth of the first human from a giraffe. And every year you walk by this person and he's celebrating the first day a human was born to a giraffe. And you tell him, great, have a wonderful day, giraffe day. Congratulations. I, I'm really happy for you. Is this something that you would do other than in a, in a condition of you being very sarcastic with this misguided person? Would you ever do something like this? The answer is obviously no. And that is why we do not. We side away from all forms of celebration, all forms of congratulation, all forms of, of engaging or approval of anything that has to do with our aqidah, with our millah. Oh, brother Muhammad, but they are not going to like us. That is the point. That is the point that they don't like you when it comes to aqidah. Because if they do, you're following their own aqidah. If they like you and like your practice, then you're following their own deen. And these are not my words. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ The Jews or the Christians, they will not be pleased with you until you follow their deen. That's what the Quran says. They will not be pleased with you. You can try harder. They will never be pleased with you. The only day they will be pleased with you is... When, you, when they see you start being misguided like them. That's the only day. So you actually don't want them to be pleased with you when it comes to Aqidah. Because when it comes to Aqidah, we want to be followers of the truth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, amanu, attaqu Allaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, attaqu Allaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. If you see somebody going in the wrong direction, you don't want to keep telling this person congratulations on going in the wrong direction. You don't have to be mean to them either. You don't have to punch them either. You don't have to hate on them either. When it comes to worldly matters, you can congratulate them on a marriage, on moving to a new house. You can congratulate them on their ch child being, you know, the soccer player of the month. You can invite them to maybe a lunch or something and tell them, you know, this is for you getting me a job. Worldly matters. We are commanded to treat them with justice and kindness. But when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to the identity of Allah, when it comes to the description of Allah, this is the very most important fundamental of any religion. The identity of God. Who are you worshipping? A cow or a mouse or a turtle? Or who are you worshipping? When it comes to the identity of Allah, we set the record straight. Nope. Merry Christmas. No, brother, I, I don't believe in Christmas. I don't believe in these things. And I'm not going to wish you that because this is all misguidance. One of two things is going to happen. If this person doesn't know the truth, they will be very surprised at your reaction because they know you're a nice person. In general, you're a good Muslim, good neighbor, good worker. But when it comes to this, it's going to cause them to go back and search for the truth. That is the first option. Or this person is so arrogant, and when you do this, and you upset them in, in, in this matter of aqidah, you upset their beliefs, their false beliefs, you will be rewarded. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is no hunger, there is no thirst, there is no fatigue, there is nothing that you can do as a Muslim that dis displeases an arrogant disbeliever like this, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. In Surah Al-Tawbah, he says that every believer, no matter what you do, anything that you do that upsets or, or troubles a disbeliever of that nature, an arrogant person, you get rewarded for that. The key is not to be popular. We're not seeking war. We're not seeking to run for offices. We're not seeking to twist the truth like other people did. We are seeking to be among the truth seekers. We are seeking to be among the honest ones. As the Quran says, Ya ladina amanu, O you who have believed, Ittaqullaha wa kunu ma'as-sadiqeen. Fear Allah and be among the truthful ones. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
to hold our hearts steadfast in the pursuit of truth. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه وتوبوا إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وعلى كل من اهتدى بهديه واتبع بسنته وسار على نهج دعوته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد أو praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى peace and blessings be upon the messenger of Allah my dear brothers and sisters our message in this life is simple to follow what Allah سبحانه وتعالى says and avoid doing anything that is haram Imagine if this is the biggest haram, the one haram that will never be forgiven, the one haram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive any act of shirk. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. But forgives anything else that is beneath shirk for whomsoever he chooses. When it comes to that haram, we want to stay as far away as possible from this. Doesn't mean we have to be mean. It doesn't mean we have to hate our people or ruin their, their, their celebrations or break their adornment on the street. Nothing like that at all. Nothing like that. But when it comes to people testing your own aqidah, testing your faith, you have to set the record straight. When it comes to matters in this life, you congratulate them on a wedding, you congratulate them about, again, buying a new house, getting into a new school, getting a good job, this, that. But when it comes to aqeedah, the identity of Allah, the identity of His messengers, the identity of Jesus, peace be upon Him, when it comes to these matters, your word has to be firm. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeedah. Oh, you who have believed, fear Allah and speak what is what is truthful. Speak the truthful word. And don't worry about anything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make this religion prevail with or without your help. But when you choose to be on the right side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, inshallah, in this life and in the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all of our sins. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hold our hearts steadfast on the righteous path or the path of those that are righteous Allahumma a'inna ala al-haqq Allahumma ahdina wa ja'alna imaman liman ihtada Rabbana ja'alna fi azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurrata a'in wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama Allahumma ahdina wa ahdina wa ja'alna a'immatan liman ihtada Rabbana a'atina fi dunia hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina a'adhaab al-nar inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واسألوه يعطكم واشكروه يزدكم وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة Allah, 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يتلونه حق تلاوته أولئك يؤمنون به ومن يكفر به فأولئك هم الخاسرون يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها عدل ولا تنفعها شفاعة ولا تنفعها شفاعة ولا هم ينصرون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ما كان لأهل المدينة ومن حولهم من الأعراب أن يتخلفوا عن رسول الله ولا يرغبوا بأنفسهم مع النفس ذلك بأنهم لا يصيبهم ظمأ ولا نصب ولا مخمصة في سبيل الله ولا يطؤون ولا يطؤون موطئا يغيظ الكفار ولا ينالون من عدو نيلا إلا كتب لهم به عمل صالح إن الله لا يضيع أجر المحسنين وما ينفقوا نفقة صغيرة وما أنفقوا نفقة صغيرة ولا كبيرة ولا يقطعون وابيا ولا ينفقون نفقة صغيرة ولا كبيرة ولا يقطعون واديا إلا كتب لهم ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما كانوا يعملون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر 
Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the khutbah and life from brother Muhammad Ahmed Recording of the Friday khutbahs are available on our Facebook uh, group, IH Forum, and also on YouTube channel, IH Forum. Please remove the double parked cars from the IIT main parking lot. Inshallah, we are going to have a New Year Qiyam on Saturday, December 31st, after Isha prayer. Program and program in Salah will be uh, conducted by Sheikh Ahmed Umarji, and we'll also have a speaker, uh, Brother Noha. We will also have a youth camp by YM from 11 a.m. to uh, Fajr Salam. We have a news for the sister Yasmin Anwar Razijani passed away. May Allah rest her uh, departed soul in the eternal peace and Jannah al Fardos and grant patience to all his family members and relatives. I mean. And the funeral uh, for this sister will be uh, tomorrow at the Garden Grove Market at 9.30 a.m. We have also news from uh, Brother Ala, his sister-in-law, uh, Zuba Sheza, passed away. We'll have more information about her funeral and, uh, and later uh, 